QWERTY is the name for the keyboard format we use when we type, at least for those of us using the English language version. But for something so commonplace, indeed something at our fingertips, very little has been known for sure about how and why it was invented. Many of the explanations we have are just based on guesswork and speculation. My name is Neil Kay, and what I want to do in this short video is to find out the truth about the invention of QWERTY and why it was an essential element in the development of the typewriter. But to do that, we have to go back to the beginning. And the beginning is to be found in early Remington typewriters. Remington produced the first commercially successful typewriter, invented in 1874 by Christopher Latham Scholes, with help from others, most especially James Densmore. Densmore was the entrepreneur behind Scholes' work, and as you might guess from his picture, he was not a man to be trifled with. If we look more closely at this early Remington, we can see it has a keyboard very similar to the modern QWERTY keyboard. It has the same basic arrangement of letters, numbers and punctuation marks. And QWERTY itself takes its name from the first six letters on the letter row. But one big difference with later typewriters was that the paper was placed along the top with the type bars held in a type basket. These swung upwards to make an impression on the paper from underneath. If we remove the paper and look down on the type basket from above, we can see the type bars are arranged in a circle. The keys are linked to the type bars through a system of levers. Pressing down on a particular key will pull up its corresponding type bar to hit the paper from underneath. However, if two neighbouring type bars were struck in quick succession, there was a serious likelihood that they would jam and even stick together, like this. This was the fundamental problem facing the original designers of the typewriter. So how was the problem solved? Scholes and Dansmore left no known record as to how they did it. But one common theory is that they used a list of the most frequent letter pairs in the English language. The list could have been used to separate these letter pairs on the type basket so that they would not meet and clash. Suppose Scholes and Densmore had used such a list to make sure each frequent letter pair was separate on the type basket. Would it have worked? We'll explore that possibility by using a list of the 20 most frequently encountered letter pairs in the English language, arranged here in alphabetical order. If they had used this frequent letter pair list, or one similar, to separate these letter pairs on the type basket, could it have solved the jamming problem? To test this, we'll use Mark Twain's Life on the Mississippi, which by some accounts was the first novel ever to be typed. This is how the novel starts. First, note that if you separate a frequent letter pair in the type basket, you also separate its reversal. For example, if you separate AN, you're also separating NA. So how often do these frequent letter pairs and their reversals occur in the extract? What we've done here is edit the text, leaving in the letter pairs not covered by the frequent letter pair list. So take, for example, the second line which has chapter 1 in it. The word chapter contains several letter pairs, CH, HA, AP, PT, TE, ER, and the reversals. Five out of these six letter pairs do not appear on the frequent letter pair list. The only one that does is ER. So we'll leave on that line CH, HA, AP, PT, and TE, all together CH, AP, TE. You can see overall there still is a considerable body of text left on the page which this kind of sorting process simply would not pick up. So separating the frequent letter pairs on the type basket would likely have had at best a limited impact on preventing jamming. It could still have left lots of other letter pairs next to each other on the type basket being typed together and jamming. So if using a frequent letter pair list would not have been a satisfactory solution, how did they solve the problem? We can see what they did by using Scrabble letters to represent characters on the Remington keyboard and type basket. We want to focus on the position of just the letters, so to simplify things further, we use blank pieces to represent numbers and punctuation marks on the keyboard and type basket. The top two rows on the original Remington keyboard take them turns to connect to type bars on the top half of the type basket. So the type bars go Q blank, W blank, 
A blank and so on round the top half of the type basket. This means you really do not have to worry about separating letters on the top of the type basket. The blank spaces, letters and punctuation do this automatically by acting as buffers separating letters on the top half of the keyboard from each other on the type basket. The bottom two rows on the keyboard also take it in turns to connect to type bars. A, Z, S, X, D and so on, in this case around the bottom half of the type basket. This is where the major danger of jamming could have occurred. This process creates a continuous string of letters on the type basket with no numbers or punctuation marks helping to separate letters from each other. The key to QWERTY lies in that continuous string of letters on the type basket. To see what they did, try to find two neighbouring letters on that string, read in either direction, left to right or right to left, that can be found together in any words in the English language. The answer is that it is very difficult. There are many letter pairs that never appear, or appear only very, very rarely, in the English language. Try finding words with letter pairs FV or VF in them, for example. Though AZ could be said to be an amazing exception to this rule. Perhaps most strikingly, the letters A and S are amongst the most promiscuous when it comes to forming letter pairs. A is willing to pair up with just about any other letter to help form words, while S can form plurals tacked on to just about any noun. But Scholes and Densmore largely neutralised them by sandwiching them between the three rarest letters in the English language, Q, Z and X. The result is that the whole of the life of the Mississippi only has a letter pair where the pair are also next to each other on the type basket about once every thousand words. The arrangement not only separated frequent letter pairs on the type basket, but almost all other letter pairs to be found in common English text. The jamming problem was one of the most serious problems impeding the early development of the typewriter. Scholes with Densmore dealt with the jamming problem by turning the problem on its head, or to put it another way, by looking down the other end of the telescope. Instead of separating frequent letter pairs, they deliberately put together infrequent letter pairs, a simple and effective solution to the jamming problem. This in turn gave us one of the 19th century's most important inventions, the typewriter, and its QWERTY legacy, which we can still see at our fingertips just about every day.